Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's having a, a wonderful, beautiful morning. This is um, a picture of the vineyards, which are very close to me um, in the fall, what it would look like right now. And uh, these are grapevines. Um, this video is called You're Saved, Now What? In the Word of God, it talks about the Messiah that would come and save his people and that he would be a blessing to the whole world. Um, and he came in the flesh, man, the son of man, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach to the Hebrews. And he died for your sins, was buried and resurrected on the third, third day. He went up to heaven and he came back, appeared to Cephas, to the twelve, and to 500 plus people. And it continu continued, he, he's been seen since his resurrection. He's been seen since the beginning. But in the new man, the son of man, the new creature, um, he's been seen by many. People who testify that they saw the, the son of man, the son of God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the word of God become flesh and dwelt among us. And he is the spotless lamb who died on the cross for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. And the beautiful thing about it is his blood is for the remission of the sins of the world. And in the word of God, he talks about his blood being an atonement. And if you heard that gospel or you heard about this man that came that was Emmanuel, God with us. You believed. You believed God. You believed the Father sent the Son and that he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son so that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is a scripture. He came from for Israel. You need to understand who he is now that you're saved. From what? From eternal hellfire. From everlasting separation from our creator. Um, from eternal torment, it says in some scriptures. You've been saved. But it's not so much about what you were saved from, but who you have received in your life. And that is a good God, a creator God who is also our Father in heaven. So the mystery of godliness has been revealed to many, and that is that Christ was seen. Jesus Christ was seen of many. He was seen of angels, and he was received up into the kingdom. He is the vine, and Israel is, is the tree. Some are cut off of the tree for unbelief on their Messiah, which Jesus is the Messiah. He was prophesied to come from the very beginning, from the very book of Gen first of Genesis. He is the great I am. He is the beginning and the ending, Genesis to Revelation. Um, and he is the godly one that we must believe on because to be holy before a holy, holy God you must be in Christ, in the one that Christ who was crucified and resurrected from the dead. Uh, the temple of God, the third temple that he created that he will dwell in. Because he won't dwell in temples made of stone. So he, his flesh is immortal. His flesh is incorruptible. Our flesh before we're saved, is corruptible, and it is mortal. When we're saved, we will be taken out, out of his flesh, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, just, just like Eve was taken out of Adam. So this is one of the parts of who you are. You're a flesh man, so your body is like a cup, and inside of that cup is a spirit. Since our spirit and our heart was fallen, well, not fallen, I don't want to say it that way, had had sinned, death entered us. 
And God put animal skin over us and put us outside the paradise of God until the day of redemption, until Jesus could come. And in this pot that we carry, um, when you believed, you were called out. That's what church in Aramaic Hebrew means. You are now a church. You are now a called out one. You are a temple of God now. You believed. So you're called out of the darkness into the light of, of Jesus. And his spirit breathed new life on you. You were baptized into um, the name of the Lord Jesus. As it says in Acts 19, you were baptized into the name. You are now part of the vine. He breathed life into you. You became born again after you believed. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, but Jesus' righteousness is what we rely on. And our shield of our faith, God counts our faith as righteousness. We wear a breastplate of Jesus' righteousness. And we carry a sword of the Spirit. Now, if you read the book of Acts, um, make sure you read 19. Because the apostles, chapter 19, the apostles talked to some people who had received Jesus Christ. They believed God. And had faith. And after they had faith, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, when they were talking to the apostles in chap in verses um, uh, 2 of chapter 19 through 5, they had heard the gospel. They believed the gospel. But they had not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ yet. They had heard... Uh, about uh, they, they had not heard about the Holy Ghost receiving the Holy Ghost after they believed so once the apostles said you know there's a Holy Ghost <laughs> um, and they talked about what they need to believe on and how that worked that John had baptized repentance and confession of your sins John had spoken of that and was baptizing with water um, and telling everyone to make their way straight for the king that was coming. And they did. Um, so they had not, these people had not received the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus yet. Um, and so it's really important that you understand that that is the born again spirit. You're now joined in the vine. You're part of the vine or the branch. You're a branch grafted into the, the tree, which the vine is the Lord Jesus. Um, and Paul had laid hands on them for them to receive the Holy Ghost after they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Why is this important to know? This is important to know because that was the spirit of truth that came after baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, gives you power to speak boldly, to proclaim the kingdom of God, to, um, to uh, persuade people by the spirit. See, it's not us. We're in agreement with Christ, but it's him that does the work that moves us. There's a scripture that says, it's not I who lives, but Christ in me, the hope of glory. So once you become saved, make sure you believed on the true Jesus. There's a counterfeit Jesus where people do not believe Jesus came in the flesh, but that it was just figuratively speaking. That is an antichrist spirit speaking when someone says that. Because it says in the scriptures, anyone who does not believe that Jesus came in the flesh is antichrist. So make sure you know that you're fellowshipping with other true believers and not counterfeit believers because there's a great apostasy and if you have to in the apostles or Jesus warned of the leaven of the Pharisees the leaven of the Pharisees that he was concerned with that would leaven the whole lump is hypocrisy hypocrisy is what wolves in sheep's clothing or even true Christians uh, might 
um, you might want to avoid <laughs> um, and try to find true Bible believing. I, I prefer the KJV. Um, I think the common uh, uh, Jewish Bible is good and there's some other ones too. But if the Bible takes out the tree that was, uh, it was a, a tree that was laid down into a cross and onto another tree. And when they nailed his hands, his hands and his feet were in a cross. His feet were on one tree and his hands were on another tree that were nailed together. That made a cross. So there's a scripture that says there are people who are enemies of the cross. These people do not believe that Jesus died on a tree, on a cross. Um, and that's another way to spot an antichrist. Anyone who does not speak of Christ and him crucified in the flesh, the man, they are antichrist. It also says in 1 John that anyone who does not believe that it, on the Father and, or that Jesus is the Christ and on the Father is antichrist. Why do I tell you this? Well, great deception is what Jesus taught at the very beginning of teaching his apostles about the end times, about the, the last day, the last days. He talked about great deception, about wolves in sheep's clothing, and to beware of these things. Um, because many would come saying, here's Christ or there's Christ. And he said, believe it not, don't go. And that is why I'm, I'm, I think God is having me make this video to warn um, new baby believers that this is the time of, that you need to be drawing near to Jesus and in, in his word. Read the book of Acts, um, chapter 19, and specifically, so you can know about the Holy Ghost. Because you're going to need the Holy Ghost in this time and hour. The Spirit of Truth, who he said he would send at the very end, and he has. Um, he, Jesus is the mediator of your faith between you and God, the Father, the Heavenly Father. And that is important to know. Because he's not only the mediator, but he's the author and the perfecter of your faith. And you need to hold up that shield to a lot of false Christs who come to you in sheep's clothing. Um, there is a harvest going on right now, and Jesus is separating his goats and his sheep. Um, goats you want to avoid, but they cannot steal your faith. And the gates of hell, the word of God says, will not prevail against the church of God. You are in Christ now. And that's um, by the Spirit you, you should live. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, has joined with your spirit and made your spirit alive. And one day, he will quick, that spirit will quicken your body and you will live when you leave this earth. Because your, your cup, your body, your flesh... Is, is holding something precious and dear to God. It's holding your spirit that's joined with his spirit. And you are made light in this world. You are a city on a hill that cannot be moved. Even though if your flesh sins, you have an advocate with the Father, the, the Lord Christ Jesus. Um, so God plants his seed. The seed is the word of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing that word of God. And then he waters with the word and then he harvests. And he binds up the tares. Tares do not produce fruit and they're actually hiding, trying not to be seen. Um, so they won't get cut off, but they will be cut off. Um, God has helpers and he has true believers who are messengers. He has holy angels who do the work of God. And we can't see those. But messengers we can see. People who believe, who know the word of God pretty well. Align yourself with them and ask Jesus to send you people that are good messengers. And you'll be fine. Um, there's also warriors. Ask him to send warriors too if you need it. And just know you're safe in his hand.
God bless you.